So to get started, this is Edit GPT, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new document here. And then I'm going to take my abstract from a previously published paper, and I'm going to go ahead and add it in to Edit GPT. And then if I want to, I can give a name for this. So I'm just gonna call this abstract up here. The nice thing about Edit GPT compared with any other um, AI research writer is that this is, this is more of a way to mark up your document. It's not going to rewrite or change it. And that's one of the things that really frustrates me if I'm someone who doesn't want to use AI in my writing. I really just want to kind of help me edit it and make things a little bit clearer. This is one good way to be able to do that. So there are a few different buttons up here and each one of these buttons basically will edit it in a different way. Grammar is going to only fix the grammar. And then as we go from left to right and down, it's going to do more and more editing with it. So light is gonna proofread it lightly. Proofread is gonna do a lot of proofreading with it. Natural is going to fix only the awkward part. Streamline is going to streamline any awkward words or phrases. We can improve, rewrite, make this more formal or concise. The other thing is we can actually add a new prompt. So they actually have a lot of different prompts available within here. You can see there's a lot of different ones within here that we can do, polish, strong, and then we can also create one ourselves. So if, if we wanted to say like, make more confident, we can have the instructions to do something like that. So you can add in your own custom prompts as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run the grammar. So this is only going to fix the grammar. And so what we see is that ultimately there isn't any grammar mistakes that it found. You can see my Grammarly found a few, but overall the Grammarly isn't actually finding real mistakes. It's finding ways to like make it sound better. This is gonna add a hyphen there. That's really a systematic preference there. Now I wanna show you if we do the proofread this. You can see it also, the only proofread this that it found is basically just adding the hyphen in there. So I can go ahead and click in this one and then say accept. And that's the only one I'm finding. So you can see that instead of it like rewriting or doing a bunch of things, it's really just doing, you can actually go through and choose whether to accept or reject each individual one. Now let's go ahead and click natural. And so we see that it's choosing a few different things. And these are, some of these are things that Grant, my Grammarly is kind of picking up on. And some of these are things that even my Grammarly isn't picking up on this. For, so for this one, it says each set of isomers had a, had at least one dimeric instead of had a minimum of. Um, so that makes it a little bit more um, kind of casual. This work aims to further develop instead of is aimed at the further development of. So it's making it a little bit more concise. Again, this was a published abstract. So if I just like wrote how I would normally write, there would be probably be a lot more editing in here. This has already been edited multiple times, but you can see it's still finding a few things and we can accept all or we can reject all. So I'm gonna go ahead and click accept all. And again, even with this, up to this point, I would say none of that would be considered AI writing. This is all basically just editing it. And I love that you can choose to accept or reject individual ones and it marks it up like it would mark up a document instead of if you like threw it in ChatGPT and asked it to edit it, it would like go through and just rewrite the whole thing or something like that, or it'd be hard to find your original words back from that. I'm gonna go ahead and say rewrite. So I'm gonna say rewrite this improving clarity and flow. Now you see we got a lot more edits in here. So you can see steroids are fascinating. This is probably one that I would reject. So I would go ahead and reject that one as well. Due to their use or roles, I would say roles is probably a good one. So I can highlight over that and just click accept. So I can go through this individually. I can choose accept all or reject all, or I can go through this individually and choose the edits that make sense that still match my voice that don't really change it in a way that I don't want it to be changed. It's using AI to make it sound better, but it's not rewriting it or anything like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say reject all to bring it back. The other thing you can do, so all of this I've been running on the entire document, but if I just wanted it to do something on a small part of my document, I can have it run on just that one part of my document as well. And so it found a few things and then I'm just gonna click accept all there. 
and now it's edited that back in. I can click the saved up here to have it save it. And then there are a few other settings that I could use. I, there's a quick enable quick prompting in the command bar, enable a suggested panel. So this has suggestions will appear here. And so we can see some of the different suggestions that I think have already been accepted in. And so we can do that there. You can compare by character, word, styles, and then we can change like the theme to dark, or we can do a manual compare. So if we wanted to compare original and final text, we could add that in here. That could actually be really helpful if you were getting multiple feedback from people, you can add it all together and have it compare it together. So now we have kind of a dark mode. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the suggestions panel, remove that. And then this allows me to quick prompt. And so I could write in my more distinct prompts there. And I'm going to go ahead and close that out. So if you're interested in a editor that's specifically AI powered, and you're interested in one that kind of maps onto like what a Microsoft Word would be able to do, I would check out Edit GPT. This was all done under a free account. I would recommend getting started with a free account, seeing if you like it and how you might use it. And I will leave a link in the description below that you can use it and a discount code if you're interested in one of their paid plans. If you're looking to write your research article, I recommend checking out my scientific research paper checklist. It's a checklist that walks you through how to structure and write out all the different tasks to write out your research article. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.